Hey guys, today is Tuesday, November 17th. The time is 4 p.m. and the temperature right now is 2 degrees Celsius. There's a look up at the CN Tower. And this here is the western end of the Skywalk. I have just finished recording a walk through there for my Johnny Stumbles channel. So if you're interested in checking that out, be sure to Head over to that channel and subscribe. I will leave a link to the channel in the description below. And the plan for this walk is to head east through the city's South Core District. The South Core is south of the railway tracks and located between Lower Simcoe to the west and Jarvis to the east. And that's the financial district just to the north there. There's a look down at Olympic Park. And that is Ripley's Aquarium, which I believe is open right now. And just behind that is the Toronto Sky Dome and of course the CN Tower. And that's Roundhouse Park across the street there. I have been through there in previous videos before. Here is Lower Simcoe Street. There's a Via train pulling into Union Station right now. Here's a look west at Olympic Park with the tower in the background. You could take Simcoe here south all the way down to Lake Ontario. It's actually just a few blocks to the south here. But I'm going to Head east for a few blocks to the Scotiabank Arena. And that's where Bremner Boulevard turns into Raptors Way. There's a look at the Delta Hotel and some of the office towers that comprise the South Core District. What's kind of neat is if you take a look at the Google Maps satellite images, you'll notice most of these buildings have green rooftops. So they all appear to have a park on their roof, which is kind of cool. These buildings also have path connections, so you could take them indoors all the way to the skyscrapers in the financial district. They connect to the path through Union Station, which is just to the east of here. So this next street is York Street, and once I cross that, I'll be on Raptors Way. 
I realize I'm still wearing my mask, so I apologize if I sound a bit muffled. Let me just take that off. There doesn't really seem to be too many people around anyways. And as it's just after 4 p.m., normally you would start to see people starting to funnel their way home from these offices. But with so few people actually working in them due to this pandemic, it's unusually quiet right here. At least in terms of people traffic, there seems to be no shortage of vehicle traffic. There's a look to the west at the Sky Dome. And I'd also just like to give a quick shout out to YouTube channel members High Fiver and Chuck Diamond, as well as Patreon member Josh. They are God tier members. So one of the perks, I guess you could call, of being a God tier member is I give you a shout out every now and then, because I don't really have much else to offer. If you are interested in channel memberships or Patreon membership, you can check out the channel memberships from the main YouTube page, and there'll be a link to Patreon memberships in the description. You don't have to do both. You don't have to do either of them, actually. <laughs> but the benefits overlap, and the pricing is the same. I do appreciate all support, even just watching and hitting the like button. So this is Scotiabank Arena, but it opened up as the Air Canada Centre in 1999. And it's the home of the Toronto Raptors and Toronto Maple Leafs, as well as the Toronto Rock professional lacrosse team. This area is known as Maple Leaf Square, but it takes on the moniker of Jurassic Park during Raptors playoff games. If you watch basketball, you're probably quite familiar with the outdoor scene here. And there's a look at Union Station with some of the financial district towers looming in the background. And those are the Harbor Plaza condos. I'm going to head down to Harbor Street, so I'll be walking right past the entrance to those at street level. The South Core has a pretty good mix of condos and office towers. There's kind of a neat view at the CN Tower. This straight ahead would be Lakeshore Boulevard. The land I'm currently walking on is mostly on landfill. So this would have been Lake Ontario at some point in time. It was from roughly the mid 1800s to 1920s that most of it was filled in and only recently it's recently been developed at the scale that you currently see it so I'm just going to head west here along Lakeshore Boulevard, which runs underneath the Gardner Expressway for this section. Most of these cars are actually trying to get on the Gardner Expressway. So even during a pandemic, there's still that 
downtown rush hour. That's good to know. And those there are the ice condos. Affectionately known as Airbnb Central to a lot of people in the city. If you've ever talked to anyone who's lived there, they'll attest to that. Although I guess that's one benefit of the pandemic. You no longer have to deal with neighbors partying all night and dragging their luggage throughout the corridors and elevators of the building. It also frees the concierge up from acting as hotel reception. I know a lot of people in the city are sort of celebrating the so-called death of Airbnb style condos. Although I imagine that business will spring right back once things start to return to normal. So I'm currently walking underneath the Gardner Expressway. And this is One York. I think this building opened in 2016. And it will be soon home to the Second City Live. Or being forced out of their home on Peter Street. I think it's Peter Street. And Wayne Gretzky's restaurant there recently closed. If I'm not mistaken, there was originally to be a Target Canada in this building. And that's part of the space the Second City is moving into. Hey, it's Toronto's Walkman. So one block to the south of here is Queen's Key, and just beyond that is Lake Ontario. And these things here you see are remnants of an off-ramp from the Gardner Expressway. The York, Bay Street, and Young Street off-ramp was removed back in 2017. And they replaced it with a much shorter ramp. And part of that was this rapidly developing South Core District I guess needed more space. I'm not entirely sure what the, the reasoning was. But this park sort of reminds everyone of the off-ramp that used to be here. And there is the Sun Life Financial Building. And just beside it, the Harbor Plaza Plaza, Plaza condos. If I'm not mistaken, those ones are 66 and 62 stories. And the Sun Life building is 35 stories. But pretty much everywhere you look here, you'll find new shiny glass towers that have gone up. It's kind of neat that at least... Some originality has gone into these ones. Uh, 
I'm going to have to get used to walking around and talking in these colder conditions. This will be my third winter recording videos for this channel, but the first one where I've done narrated videos like this, where I offer pointless commentary. I pretty much do that on most of the videos now. There's a hair salon. Maybe I'll cross the street here and take a look at the old Toronto Harbor Commission building, which is home to the Harbor 60 Steakhouse. There is currently no indoor dining in the city of Toronto, but they have a rather large outdoor space set up. If you try to get reservations there, you'll have to be early as it's quite popular. For my money, it's the second best steak I've had in the city. My favorite steakhouse would be Barbarians. Although, I seldom, if ever, eat at places this fancy, and this building is also home to the Toronto Port Authority. This building was originally completed in 1917. And where I'm standing right now used to be the edge of the waterfront. This was on a little wharf that stuck out. And the Harbor 60 building was as far south as you could go in the city. And even that was on landfill back then. That was just before they filled in the rest of this land. This next street here is Bay Street. There's a look at the Weston Harbor Castle Hotel. And that big new glass pair of skyscrapers there is the IBC Square. Man, it's quite windy. I should have considered wearing gloves. I am recording this with external audio and the camera's internal audio, which is set up to record in stereo. I'm not sure which one I'll end up using. I'm still kind of evaluating different setups. Here's something you definitely should never see on the sidewalk. I can't imagine there being too much demand for $20 parking. It's kind of full-scale, non-pandemic prices there. And this restaurant has a nice, quote-unquote, outdoor patio. I'm not really sure how or why that qualifies as being outdoors. Some restaurants have definitely had to get creative. And this development over here near the foot of Young Street is known as Pinnacle. That is one Young Street. And that will soon be home to the tallest tower in not just Toronto, but all of Canada or rather building, I guess. The CN Tower, of course, would be taller. When it's completed, it'll be just over a thousand feet. I think a thousand and twenty-five feet. It'll be the tallest of a trio of towers going up. There'll be 95, 80, and 65 units or stories. And there will be a mix of condos, offices, and retail, and I believe some hotel use. 
There's a look north up Yonge Street, often incorrectly referred to as the world's longest street. I think even the Guinness Book got that wrong. So on the south end of Yonge Street, we have one of Toronto's only true super tall buildings going up. In fact, we don't have any super talls at the moment. And at the other end of downtown on Young and Bloor, at One Bloor West, there's another 1,000 footer going up that I think will be about 12 feet shorter than this one. That is the One Bloor West condominium. That one's got a rather funky design. So it's kind of a neat time to be a skyscraper fan in the city. And on the corner there is the old Toronto Star Building. And that too is getting a facelift. I think they're putting a whole new facade on it. And I think they might even be adding a few floors to it. West Town Harbor Street, where I just came from. And that would be Lake Ontario just ahead. But I think I'll be turning east on Queens Key. And we'll just explore a little bit more of the South Core District. Alright, I want to stay on the north side here. I've walked along the south side of Queen's Key before, but I can't recall sticking to this side. I think I'll finish this walk up in that complex there, just along the lake. And I do have my gear with me to live stream, so I figure I'll fire up a live stream. I haven't done one since Saturday. So that's kind of due, even though I'll be nice and cold. Kind of an interesting design on these buildings. And there's some neat artwork in between them. If you're interested in hearing more about these buildings and some of the properties on the south side, such as the Red Path Sugar Refinery right there, you can check out my Queens Key East narrated video. This is Freeland Street.
Yeah, let's go head up and explore some of the more industrial side of the South Core area. As I mentioned earlier, this was mostly undeveloped. There were a lot of parking lots and industrial warehouse type buildings like this. There was even a car impound lot. I remember a friend once got towed and we were down in this area to retrieve his car. It would have been crazy to think 15 years later we'd be looking at massive condos going up in the same area. That's kind of cool. It's got kind of a old-timey vintage look to it. Twenty-eight Freeland Street. Perhaps I'll look that one up. There's so many high-rises going up in the city. It's virtually impossible to keep tabs on them all. But UrbanToronto.ca is a pretty good rift, uh, resource. I remember using that site a long time ago. We often have people taking pictures and providing updates of all the developments as well. Looks like there's some kind of secure bike parking at this facility. Hey, you can see the Royal York Hotel on Front Street peeking out there. There's definitely some Instagrammable worthy moments back here. I don't know why I said back here. Maybe because it feels kind of like a back lot somewhere. So I think the South Core, as I mentioned, officially ends to the east of here at Jarvis Street, but I'll just head over for one more block. This whole area mostly looks just like this. Not sure what this building is. could be the uh, headquarters of the LCBO, the province's main government-controlled liquor store. And I believe just next door, the LCBO is moving. There's a old LCBO store at the front of this property. And I think it's in here on Queens Key where there'll be a brand new LCBO. I think it's actually in that building right there. Well, there's not a whole lot to look at if I go down that way. Maybe I'll go one more block over. What the heck, why not, right? As you can tell, I carefully 
plan these walks ahead of time and know exactly where I'm going. Backside of Loblaws. I used to live just over there in the St. Lawrence neighborhood, and we would come to this Loblaws somewhat regularly. I actually walked by the home that I lived in on the last live stream I did. So I've made it to Lower Jarvis, so that is the South Core from where it starts to the west to where it ends to the east, at least unofficially. I don't know why this is called Warrior's Way. I'm sure there's a story behind that. It's funny that they built this supermarket well before most of these condos started going up. And it looks like George Brown College is occupying this building here. They've got a fairly large sprawling campus going on down here in the south. And you know what? I'm going to scratch my previous plans of ending this walk because just up ahead is Sugar Beach, so I might as well just head over there as it's kind of interesting and we'll finish the walk at Sugar Beach it's a man-made beach not for swimming Just north of Front Street, all these lower streets just become the regular version. So Lower Jarvis becomes Jarvis, Lower Sherburn becomes Sherburn, Lower Simcoe, Simcoe, Spadina, etc.
this is certainly a long light cycle. These uh, permanent sun umbrellas are exactly like the ones across the street and Sugar Book or Sugar, I almost called it Sugar Bush, <laughs> Sugar Beach, where I'll be heading to in a second. And it looks like I will finally get a chance to cross the street here. I apologize for that. I don't really edit these videos short, so if I get stuck out of light, I just leave the camera rolling. That was the original concept of the channel anyways, to experience the city as a pedestrian. Those were the good old days when I used to keep my mouth quiet. Looks like this guy's snapping some shots of the area. You do get a pretty neat skyline view if I were to spin around and take a look. recent years they've been holding the Sugar Shack Festival here. And I think that's in the winter time. I remember going one year and it was just a bunch of junk food candy vendors and things like that, but it was kind of a neat thing to come check out. Tim Hortons had a truck up, or a truck, <laughs> truck up, truck set up, handing out free coffee which was certainly very much appreciated, even though it was Tim Hortons. There's Chorus Entertainment and the Edge 102 Studios, which used to be over in the Eaton Center on Young Street. Here's that money shot of the skyline. Pretty sure I've used that as a thumbnail shot in a few videos before. There's the CN Tower peeking out. And this looks like an excellent place to start my live stream. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this walk through the city's South Core District. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. And check out my other channel, Johnny Stumbles, and subscribe if you haven't yet. As well as to this one, of course. Thanks again guys and I will catch you on the next one.